I'm gonna show you how to beat the classic 4-3-3 in Football Manager. We're gonna dive into the formation's strengths, its weaknesses, and some example tactics that you can use to take it down. So let's get right into it. One of the main strengths that makes a 4-3-3 so difficult to play against is how well it suits a possession-based tactic. Without the players even having to move from their starting positions, this formation creates triangles all across the field. This in turn means that a player will at all times have at least two players close by to pass the ball to, setting up a team to dominate the ball and the match. Secondly, the positioning of the players in this formation creates a great coverage of space all across the field. We've seen in previous videos on the channel how valuable it is to divide the pitch into five horizontal zones and to have players attacking each of these zones. And the 4 3, 3 suits this perfectly as the players in their base position are spread evenly across all the zones, having two players in each zone. But it's not just great in one dimension. If we look at the players positioning vertically, we can see that they again occupy five zones. So the 4 3 3 is set up to battle it out for every part of the pitch. Furthermore, with the strong presence of the three central midfielders and either the wingers or the fullbacks cutting inside more often than not, this formation gravitates toward putting pressure on the often valuable central areas. And if we switch our focus to the defense, the 4 3 3 is a go to formation for any high pressing system. Having a strong central defensive foundation gives the player security to step up out of position and create a pressing trap. This extra player joining the press looks to create two on one situations, recovering the ball quickly and dominating the match again. And if the press does happen to be broken, the 4 3 3 has an amazing rest defense to fall back on. When one of the fullbacks joins the attack, the other fullback usually stays back and tucks inside a bit more. So when the press is broken, they've got a solid defensive line of three defenders, with a defensive midfielder in front of them trying to sweep up any direct balls trying to start a counter attack. But we're going to be trying to break this formation down, so now that we know its strengths, let's look at some weaknesses that we can exploit. We've just seen how the 4 3 3 creates a solid rest defense if one of the fullbacks stays back and tucks in, but that's not always what happens. While trying to break down an opponent with all their triangles, the fullbacks in a 4 3 3 might get a bit overexcited and both join the attack, leaving a lot of space on the wings behind them. But that's not the only way that a 4 3 3 might struggle defending on the wings. If they want to keep their central foundation, it requires requires the wingers to track back and help in the defense, which they don't always do. So they'll either leave your fullback open to move up and put in some crosses, or they'll shift their midfield, opening up space on the other side of the pitch for your team to switch the ball to. But it doesn't always have to be the wide areas where they'll leave space. A tactical trick that 4-3-3 systems like to use is to have the defensive midfielder drop in between the center backs to provide space for the fullbacks to move up a bit when building up their attack. In this situation, the defensive solidity of their central midfield is weakened leaving them open for a central overload. So if you see their defensive midfielder dropping back, switching your attack to focusing on central areas might be the way to go. We also want to set up our own defense as best as we can against the 4 3 3 and there's two things we can focus on. Their singular striker is relatively far removed from the rest of their team, while he's often a crucial part of their goal scoring threat. So while the opponent is busy building up their play, dropping back a bit and making sure to cut off any passing lane to their striker will neutralize most of their danger. And if they can't easily reach their striker, they'll be left to focus on keeping possession and slowly building up an attack. And one of the best ways to counteract such a slow possession based attack is to drop back a bit and become a patient, tight defense. And playing like that actually plays into another one of the 4-3-3's weaknesses. To create enough numbers in their attack, a 4-3-3 demands a lot of up and down movement from either their central midfielders, the fullbacks or both. So while we're sitting back patiently, they're tiring themselves out trying to create their little triangles. And the more tired they'll become, the easier it'll be for us. And you know what might be the easiest thing out there? Tapping that like button. Now that we know the 4 3 3 weaknesses, let's look at three example tactics, each one of them designed to exploit a different aspect of the formation. This first tactic looks at abusing a 4 3 3 where both their fullbacks like to push on. Dropping three players into the defensive midfield position helps cut off passing lanes and isolate their striker, neutralizing a lot of their danger. Having such a defensively minded midfield opens up the possibility of leaving our wingers on attack, letting them occupy the space that the opponent's fullback will leave behind. And with our fullbacks deployed as wingbacks, we'll be sure to test their defense on the wings. When defending, we'll look to funnel the ball to the wide areas to set ourselves up for a wide counter attack. We'll also be sure to really focus on that counter attack and distribute the ball quickly once we got it. And once we're attacking, we're definitely gonna focus our play down the wings, playing a high tempo football and running at the defense to give them no chance to recover. But we've seen that the wings aren't the only place where a 4-3-3 might leave some space, and that's where tactic 2 comes in. 
This tactic is specifically designed for when their opponent's defensive midfielder drops in between their center backs, leaving them open for a central overload. Our central attacking midfielder is positioned perfectly in the space that their defensive midfielder has left behind, while the inside forwards join the central areas to create mayhem. It's a similar counter-attacking setup like the first tactic, but this time we're trapping them to the inside to help set up a central counter-attack. And in possession, we'll double down on our central overload by playing fairly narrow and focusing our play down the middle. We'll also play a short, high-tempo passing style to really split their defense as quickly as possible. But what if you don't want to focus on the counter-attack? Well, that's where tactic 3 comes in. This tactic looks at breaking up their possession play as much as possible. Our wingers combined with our wingbacks will make sure that the opponent's wingers will have to trap back to defense, neutralizing their danger. Having 4 players in attack really helps putting a lot of pressure on the defense, stopping their build-up play before it even gets going. And we're doubling down on this with our out of possession instructions, pressing high and with a lot of intensity. Combining with this, we're also going to be counter pressing once we lose the ball to really give them no time to relax. And finally, we'll be focusing our play down the wings so one of our wingers or wingbacks can put in some crosses for our two danger men up top. But these are just example tactics. The most important thing is that you'll now understand how the 4 3 3 works and that you can build your own tactic to break it down. I'm gonna show you how to beat the good old 4-4-2. We'll look at the formation's strengths, its weaknesses, and some example tactics that you can use to break it down. So let's get right into it. One of the 4-4-2's strengths lies in its defense. The two banks of four in the midfield and the defense can really stick together and become an eight-man defensive wall for the opposition to break down. There's not many formations that create so many numbers in the defense, and combine that with the natural defensive width that the 4-4-2 creates, it becomes a hellish task to break down. But this formation really shines when it wins the ball back, because it's a counter-attacking dream. The positioning of players in a 4-4-2 creates a lot of vertical passing lines, facilitating a high-tempo, direct transition from defense to attack, making those counter-attacks extra dangerous. But the distribution of players doesn't only create a lot of vertical passing lines, it also creates a lot of natural attacking width. Without having to move horizontally, the players in a 4-4-2 occupy the entire width of the pitch, naturally stretching the play and being able to pounce on any space that the opposition left behind. And even if a 4-4-2 would struggle to play the ball into that width, it can benefit from the fact that having two strikers up front is always tough to deal with. The ever-popular combination of our target forward with a pacey partner is as powerful as ever, being able to skip over any press, putting them one-on-one -on -one with the center backs. But maybe the biggest strength of them all is simplicity. Usually speaking, the strikers can stay up front, the midfield only has to run up and down, and the defenders can stay back a bit more. It really only requires hard work and discipline, making it a favorite for the less technically gifted teams out there. But there are some weaknesses in the 4-4-2 that we can use to bring it down. As I just said, the formation requires a lot of hard work and discipline, which will take its toll on players. Especially the midfielders will have to go up and down the pitch a lot, having to support both the attack and the defense. This constant up and down running of the midfielders might see the performance drop in the later stages of the match, which a patient opponent might look to exploit. Secondly, the 4-4-2 will never really dominate a match, as the formation doesn't suit the possession-based approach that well. Its players are spread too far apart to really facilitate those interplay combinations, so you probably won't see the next Barcelona Tiki Taka playing a 4-4-2. Adding to that, the 4-4-2 might not let every type of player really shine, especially the creative types. Its simple, rigid structure usually doesn't leave space for any players like, for example, Ozil to have a creative spark, making the formation more predictable and therefore a bit easier to counteract. And perhaps the largest weakness of a 4-4-2 is its struggles with a central overload. As the formation only has those two central midfielders, it's quite easy for the midfield to get outplayed by a 3-player triangle or 4-player box, losing ground in that valuable central area. This tactical insight ushered in the popularity of a 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1, and it's something that we can exploit with our tactics. And perhaps the biggest weakness of a 4-4-2 is that it didn't tap that like button. Can you imagine? Now that we know the 4-4-2's weaknesses, let's look at three example tactics, each one looking to exploit one of the weaknesses. This first tactic is looking to dominate possession, and with that neutralize the threat of a 4-4-2's counter-attack. The most important positions in this tactic are the three-man midfield, who can create a triangle in the central area that'll outplay the 4-4-2's midfield, and can create chances for the attack. When we're attacking, we're looking to prevent losing the ball and getting counterattacks by dropping our tempo a bit, dribbling less and really working the ball into the box. We're also not gonna go head over heels to start counterattacking ourselves, choosing to calmly start our attack from central areas by distributing the ball to our center backs. 
But this tactic isn't all calm and easy, as we want that ball at all times. So out of possession, we're gonna press high and with a lot of intensity to get the ball back as quickly as possible. But that's certainly not the only way to combat a 4-4-2. Let's look at tactic number two. The second tactic looks to exploit the toll a 4-4-2 takes on its midfield, waiting patiently to then strike with a quick counter-attack through the middle. Having 8 players back to defend ourselves will cut off any danger from the 4-4-2, while the 3 central midfielders are ready to explode forward and overwhelm the midfield. We're really doubling down on overloading the central areas, with 2 inverted wingbacks joining the midfield and focusing our play down the middle with some high tempo football. We want to lure them into our counter-attacking trap, so out of possession we're gonna lower our defensive line and drop off a bit more, while keeping our strikers a bit more forward to quickly get them behind. And you better believe that this time we are hitting that counter-instruction. Now let's go to our final tactic. This free centre-back system helps to defend against the danger of the two strikers of a 4-4-2. Especially against the target forward pacey partner combination, the central defender on cover will help to sweep up any balls that are headed on. In the attack, our two inside forwards will sit more narrow, creating a box in the midfield to overload the central areas. Combining with this, we're going to be making our attacking width a bit more narrow while focusing our play down the middle to really use that central box that we created. And this time, we're not going to give them any time at all. Counter pressing when we lose the ball, focusing on the counter attack when we get the chance, and pressing high and with a lot of intensity to make their life a living hell. But these are just example tactics. The most important thing is that you'll now know the weaknesses of a 442, and you can find your own ways to exploit them. I'm gonna show you how to beat the overpowered 4231. Not only are we gonna look at a deep dive analysis of this formation, giving us the key of how to break it down, I'm also gonna show you three example tactics which you can use to set up your team against a 4231. So make sure to watch the whole video so you'll know everything to beat this ever popular formation. The best way to start to break down a formation is to know its strengths, so let's start there. While the 4 2 3 one strengths lie mainly in the attack, it can also be a very solid defensive formation. The two central, often more defensive midfielders can create a solid block with the two central defenders, providing great defensive strength in the often valuable central areas. On the other side of the pitch, having four attackers really suits a high pressing system, adding to the defensive strength in the form of defending from the front. But this formation really shines when it's attacking. The 4 2 3 one creates triangles between the players all across the field, facilitating quick and short passes that can break any press. Furthermore, the extra central attacking midfielder can help create central overloads. This could lead to the situation where one of the opposition center backs would have to step in, leaving the free attackers one-on-one -on -one with their defenders. And finally, the 4 2 3 one can also be a very dynamic attacking formation, giving the freedom of using both traditional wingers that like to keep the width, as well as more goal-focused inside forwards. But you don't have to throw in the towel yet, as the 4 2 3 one also has some weaknesses to balance it out. First off, as this formation usually gears toward attacking central areas, it can struggle against teams that use a low block who overcrowd the center of the pitch. Secondly, since the 4 2 3 one only uses one striker, that striker can become a bit isolated if the opposition can put enough pressure on the players behind him, basically taking him out of the match. Another position that might struggle in this formation are the fullbacks, as the 4 2 3 one puts a big burden on them. Not only are they often asked to move up and support the attack, they are then required to sprint back to the defensive positions once the ball has been lost, as the attacking mix rarely track back to help defend. And since the attacking wingers often stay further up the field, the 4 2 3 one can struggle defensively against teams that like to focus their attack on the wings. But it's not only the fullbacks which are required to work hard. With the quick passing, high pressing and then have to quickly track back to defend, the 4 2 3 one can demand a lot of its players, possibly leading to a drop in quality in the later stretches of the match. And the final weakness of the 4 2 3 one that we can use is that it can struggle against two striker formations. While the two central midfielders can help create that defensive block in the middle, if they are pulled out of position or circumvented completely, the two striker formation creates one-on-one -on -one situations with the center backs, which is a guaranteed recipe for danger. And a secret bonus weakness is that a 4 2 3 one will struggle once you tap that light button. Look at it, it doesn't know what to do. Now we know the strengths and weaknesses of a 4 2 3 one let's look at building some tactics to break it down. I'm gonna give you three example tactics, each one designed to exploit a different set of weaknesses of the 4 2 3 one 
but I can take all the credit. These examples are adaptations of the tactics of RDF tactics. I'll leave a link to the original tactics in the description below. Let's have a look at the first one, which is a 4-3-3 DM wide. This tactic is all about the low block and frustrating the 4-2-3-1. The goal here is to let them have possession and tire themselves out and then hit them on the counter attack. Our defensive midfielder will take away the danger of the 4-2-3-1's attacking midfielder. And once we get the ball, our short high tempo passing will see us break away at great speeds. And it's not that we're sitting back and doing nothing. We're still counter pressing and pressing more often. It's just from a deeper position. It's all focused on nullifying their attacking threats and setting ourselves up for a dangerous counter attack. But that's not the only way to combat a 4-2-3-1. Let's look at tactic number two. This 5-2-3 DM wide is looking to exploit a different weakness of the 4-2-3-1, defending the width. We've seen how the 4-2-3-1 can create a solid defensive block in the central areas, so this tactic circumvents that whole block and focuses on the wings. Playing fast and focusing down both wings will force their attacking wingers to either track back or leave a man open, where our inside forwards will be looking to make them pay. And this time we're not sitting deep, pressing high up the pitch and with a lot of intensity to not give them any time on the ball so they can play that possession-based football which suits the 4-2-3-1 so well. And if they do manage to break our press, we've got two defensive midfielders combined with three centre-backs to cover the central areas. But we're not done yet. Let's look at another way to beat a 4-2-3-1. This third tactic looks at beating fire with fire, focusing on dominating the centre of the pitch. While the 4-2-3-1 tries to create a central overload with their three midfielders, this tactic one-ups them by creating a central diamond with the four midfielders. But that's not even our main attacking threat. As the 4-2-3-1 will be occupied by the battle of the midfield, we'll hopefully be creating plenty of 1v1 situations between our two strikers and their centre-backs. And if even one of the centre-backs makes a mistake, one of our attackers is straight through on goal. As this formation is narrow by design, we'll be playing a bit more wider to give ourselves some space to run into, complemented nicely with the pass into space instruction. As we don't want to let them play their game, we're gonna be pressing high and much more often to break down that 4 2 3 one but these are just examples. The important thing is to really understand the strengths of the 4-2-3-1 and how to beat it. These insights will help you in any situation, whether you're adapting an example, tweaking your current tactic or building a completely new one. I'm gonna show you how to beat a free center back formation. We'll look at the strengths and weaknesses of using a setup like this, as well as free example tactics that you can use to break it down. The biggest and most obvious strength is the central defensive cover that three centre-backs provide, as they will always create a one-man majority against all the common one or two striker tactics. But it's not just central dominance, as the wingbacks can drop back to create a five-man defence. Not even taking midfielders into account that can also drop back, this five-man line is incredibly tough to break down, as it essentially takes away any space that the opposition might look to exploit. And once the opposition has lost all hope on getting through on goal and they lose possession, a free centre-back formation can be incredibly dangerous on the attack as well. There's two keywords for how a free centre back formation can be lethal on the attack. The first one being versatility. Having a strong defensive presence means that the midfield and attack can be set up to perfectly suit the attacking strengths of a team without having to put that much focus on the rest defense. Usually you'll either see a two striker setup looking to constantly put pressure on the opposition defensive line with a midfield trio behind them combining with the three centre backs to dominate the central areas or you'll see a three man forward line with two players starting on the wings to combine with the wing backs and create a wide dominance to then either put in some crosses or make some dangerous inward runs. But no matter how they line up, a free centre back formation is certain to create our second keyword in the attack, great player distribution. That's more than one word. If we divide the pitch into five vertical zones, we can see that no matter how a free centre back formation lines up, they've got at least one player in each of these zones without having to move horizontally at all, giving it a great coverage of the entire field. But don't worry, there are some weaknesses in a free centre back formation that we can look to exploit. We've seen how free centre back formations require the wingbacks to drop in to make that 5 man defence, as well as asking them to join the attack to create that great player distribution, which is a lot to ask of them. These two players will have to constantly run up and down the pitch for 90 minutes while having to be great at defending and attacking. If one of these players isn't of a high quality, that immediately brings down the effectiveness on that side of the pitch, which we then can target for both our pressing and our attacking play. And it's not just the quality 
quality of the Wingbacks that can prove dangerous for these setups, as the free center back formation will almost always struggle with defending wide areas. You've got a wingback that likes to join the attack, either no attacking wide players and one that usually doesn't like to track back, and a wide center back that has to choose between covering the wide area or maintaining that central defensive dominance. This often leaves a lot of free space in the wide areas, which a targeted counter attack can use to get around and behind the defensive line. And finally, the defensive solidity of a free center back formation is built on those center backs being rigid, in line with each other and communicating well. But while this can be tough to break down for a general tactic, having a focused attack on disrupting the interplay between these three center backs can create utter chaos in the defensive line, seeing their defensive wall crumbling down. Now that we know the weaknesses of a free center back formation, let's look at three example tactics that you can use to break it down. This first tactic is looking to exploit the situation where one of their wingbacks isn't up to the required quality and then becomes our main target. The 4 2 3 1 is already one of the most powerful formations in the game, and our midfield trio should be able to withstand any central overloads that a free center back formation might look to create. Most, if not all, of our danger will be coming from one of our wings. In this example, it's the right side, where we have more attacking and creative roles compared to the left. We'll also be focusing our play down that wing, as well as using opposition instructions to trigger our press on the corresponding wingback, to really make sure to exploit their heavy reliance on an underperforming player. In this example, we're focusing on the left wingback, but the great thing is that we can easily switch our focus to the right wingback by simply mirroring the player roles and team instructions in our tactic. But what if their wingbacks are actually quite strong? Well, that's where the following two tactics can help you out. This 4 3 3 is looking to exploit the free spaces in the wide areas that are often left behind by soaking up pressure and hitting them with a direct wide counter attack. We'll be setting up in a low block to let them move up the field, baiting them to leave that space on the wings. But we won't sit idly by, because when they do get up the field, we'll be heavily pressing them to recover possession. And when we do get the ball back, we'll immediately focus on the counter attack, distributing the ball quickly to either flank. And in those wide areas, we'll have a dangerous combination of a wing back, a Metzala, and an inside forward combining to overload the wide areas, getting around and behind their defensive line. But that's certainly not the only way to break their defensive line. Let's look at our final tactic. This 5-2-3 tactic is all about putting constant and dynamic pressure on their free center backs. We've built our own little defensive wall with a 7-man defense, nullifying a lot of the opposition's danger. We won't be sitting as deep with this tactic, and you might notice a bit of a gap between the defense and the attack. But this is intentional, as we're looking to skip that whole build-up play and immediately get the ball to our attacking strike force, and specifically our target forward. He'll be looking to win his aerial duels and occupy one or even two central defenders, all while his two partners in crimes advance forward are looking to punish any positional mistakes in their defensive line. And even when these three strikers can't immediately break down the defensive wall, they'll be joined by two wingbacks and two Segundo Volantes bombing up the field, instructed to hit early crosses back into the strikers to keep up the constant pressure on the center backs. But what if they switch formations in game? Well, you can check out some of my other videos on how to beat some of the most popular formations in FM23. I'll see you on the next video.